mighty clyde stairs will we'll make your day you're listening to backfire with steve hickson on whoop fm call 423-614-5553 to join in on the conversation now back to backfire all right we're back we're back uh-oh, the phone's already ringing. Let's take a call. Go ahead, caller. Hey, he, he also delayed the mandate for the midterm elections. Well, he put it until past the election. You're absolutely right. He did that to protect Democrats at the polling place. So right. once again, he breaks the law for his own personal political gain. But Franklin's okay with that. Well, I think the law actually didn't go into effect till after the <laughs> midterms anyway. Actually, the mandate was supposed to kick in Any other this summer, questions, caller? and he delayed it till next summer, Franklin. Thanks. Thanks. Caller's exactly right. He delayed it until after the next election. I thought he was talking about the last election, though, John. That's the way I understood Well, he's done it. That, that's been the history of this president. He's done it on other occasions. Let's You're take right. another call. Go ahead, caller. How you guys doing? We're good. How about you? Good. You know who's calling? Brett. It is. Oh, boy. What the score of the ball game last night? Uh, the Mets and the losing, uh, they, uh, they uh, beat us last night five to three. Mm-hmm. Well, Brett, what do you think about the uh, president of the United States? I, I didn't see, I didn't see him. I didn't see him that he came and chatted it. Chattanooga. Not, not, not a whole lot of people went to see him. In Actually, I, I talked to someone from Amazon that said he was told to go. Oh, he really? was made to go, and then he was let off because the president was late. And he said we got paid to work, paid for the rest of the day, even though we didn't work. <laughs> All right, Brett. Hey, I was going to let y'all know somebody's birthday is today. Whose birthday? It's Lisa's. Oh my goodness! Well, we'll have to send her a special birthday wish. Yeah, it's Lisa's birthday today. All right. Thanks, Brett. I, I just going to let y'all know the tickets go on sale uh, uh, for tomorrow night. Cleveland Macaulay game for tomorrow night. For uh, tomorrow night. Tickets are on sale. Yeah, for the Cleveland Macaulay game. Thank you, buddy. Bye-bye. I've just got one thing to say about that. Go Bears. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're a real mixed-up family. Lisa and I both graduated from Bradley. My daughter graduated from Cleveland, and Ian is a starter on the Walker Valley football team. So we're, having, we're pulling for Walker Valley. You, you've got every color in your closet, have you? <laughs> a little bit. That, team, that team's worked really hard. They, uh, you know, I tell you, it's, it's kind of hard. We read the newspaper accounts. And Walker Valley, I, I personally don't think, is getting the respect that they deserve. They, you know, their write-ups are short. And, and very uh, uh, thin, uh, mm-hmm. whereas some of the write-ups for Cleveland and Bradley are very full. Uh, but that's a hard-working team, and I think they're going to surprise a lot of people. Let's take another call. Go ahead, Colin. Good morning, Steve. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I like Frank a lot, but uh, I hate it when they say go Bears. I'm a Cleveland fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, i got to stick with my alma mater. Yeah, that's okay. But anyway, uh, you know, was talking about Obamacare and everything like this. Uh, uh, people that's already uh, on Medicare – Part A and B, they don't have to worry about that, do they? Well, until they run out of money, which that the, both those programs are running out of money. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's Medicare or Social Security run out of money. Do you? Absolutely. Every every panel that's looked at it says they're going to run out of money. Yeah, it's going it's going to be a while. Though. Social Security is already paying out more money each year than they're collecting in each year. Mm-hmm. And the trust fund that's supposed to be there for Social Security, the Democrats voted in the 60s to start taking money out of it and putting IOUs in. So those trillion, billions of dollars that are supposed to be there in reserve are just a pile of IOUs. The, the current status of Social Security traces to a deal worked out between President Reagan and then Speaker Tip O'Neill. The Democrats, ext- once again, were in control. Both that, houses of the Congress that you know, well, you know those Republicans when they compromised. They were in control, frankly. That extended the life of Social Security for about 25 extra years, which, which has it solvent up. into the 2030s. And, you know, this is something we've had to do 
periodically throughout the last 75 years. Franklin, for the first and time ever, adjusted. Social Security is paying out more, and better. And you're not even touching the demographic bomb that's getting ready to go off with the baby boomers retiring. That's you're also right. not They're touching going to have to make the birth rate. To you're not touching the birth rate problems. And and the first time someone says make an adjustment to it, which is by the way what Paul Ryan said, the Democrats ran an ad of him pushing a little lady in a wheelchair off a cliff. So that's how reasonable they were. Yeah, but uh, uh, I think it's for also it's for people that's worked all their life has paid in, so surely they will have something there. Well, the problem with the Medicare Medicare paying in is the average worker pays in, and I don't. This is not exact. I had it a few weeks ago, around a hundred and thirty something thousand over the course of their lifetime. They will withdraw out around three hundred and thirty thousand. Well, uh, I just hope it stays in there for your kids and for you, because uh, I, I know you are not ready to retire yet. You're not. Oh, well, I am. I'll be 65 here October 1st. I, I think you're fine, and, and Franklin and I might be fine. The real sad thing here is yeah. what the president and, and the Democrats are doing with this is they're basically putting this off on our kids. It won't be there for our kids. It will be out of money. Well, I hope not, but anyway. We- if the Republican Party gets its way, it won't be there. It won't be there if nothing is done is, to it, what Franklin. What are the Democrats going to do to change if they don't, If you don't do something to it, it's done. Well, how do you pay for it but with taxes? Well, one thing, Franklin, is, for example, disabilities. Disability claims have skyrocketed the last four years under this president. The real funny thing is the Thanks, research Skylar. all indicates Thanks. there's been no increase in the number of people, the number of workers with disabilities. Actually, and the report happened? that just came out this week indicates that this is purely a problem with administration. They have relaxed the rules for getting disability. Actually, the rule relaxation happened about seven years ago. Um, That's when the rule got changed. And that's when you begin to was see. Was that under Bush's term or Obama's it term? It was under Bush's term. Well, here's a, here's a real absolutely interesting. Was. Here's a real interesting concept for you, Franklin. Something you're not willing to do on the Obamacare issue. I, I will go back and look that rule change up and see. And if it happened under George Bush, I will tell you that was a mistake. It was completely wrong. He was wrong. It shouldn't have happened. And we need to fix it. You, on the other hand. Your partisanship blinds you to facts like Obamacare is a train wreck and he's violating the law when he violates all the provisions of the act. But don't worry about it. We'll pay for it somehow. No, don't worry about it. Someone else will pay for it. (laughs) Let's take another call. Go ahead, caller. Good morning, Dobo. Good morning. Is this red? I thought you were supposed to be the narrator on there. I am. You noticed me not saying much? Well, you don't supposed to be jumping in there helping John. I'm not helping John. I'm helping Franklin. It's okay. I keep saying it I'm just help- makes it a fair fight. Hey, Red. <laughs> hey, Red. You misunderstand me. I'm trying to help Franklin. I'm trying. I'm trying to help Franklin. With John, we know that. I want to ask John. Something. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to see you live on a fixed income for one month. Can you do it? Uh, everybody lives on a fixed income, Red. It depends on no, what the I'm income is. Like the- <laughs> not like you. you In other words. You know, you know, Red, I'll be honest with you, and I'll get a little personal here. My granddad worked until he was 88 years old. Uh-huh. He worked seven days a week. He made house calls. He saw people on the side porch. The reason you have doctors and dentists and even lawyers working until they're 75 and 85 years Hang old, on, we have point. nothing, Red. We have no insurance provided for us. We have no retirement provided for us. You work till you die because if you don't, you have no income. But that's not what I'm saying. You have plenty and you can afford all it. Uh, see Red, I will tell you that kind of class warfare that kind of class warfare is what is destroying this country. I went to school for eight years of college, Red. Do you know how long it takes to go through eight years of college? Eight years? <laughs> Do you know how hard that is? And I have friends that graduated from high school and got a job right out of high school. Everything was handed to you on a super You know what? If you want to say that, my family has worked hard their whole life, Red. I know your family. Well, I'm glad you do. Then you know they worked hard their whole life. I know your grandfather and your father did. Red, let's try to get I haven't worked hard. Is that what you're saying? What? So I haven't worked hard. My grandfather and my father did, but I didn't work hard. It was all handed to you. So a dental degree was handed to me. Probably with your daddy's help. With my dad's help. See, Red, that's the kind of attitude that is going to destroy this country. Uh-huh. No, you're the kind of people that's going to destroy. All right, Red. Hey, hey, Red. Yeah. You're wanting some. You're wanting some John to live on your income. Is that what it is? Yeah, I want him to live on my income for one month. I bet he could do it because he's a pretty good hunter too. I don't 
think he can. He, I bet he can f- find his own food and grow well, red. I tell you what, if people would focus more on what they're doing and quit being so focused on what someone else has or doesn't have, everybody's life would be better. But we have become a envious, jealous nation. And that's what this president rides to the polls well, every four years, like and it will destroy this country if we don't get now, off wait of a minute. it. Now, Red, I want, to cha- I want you to ask Franklin that same question. Because I don't think Franklin can hunt and uh, grow vegetables like John. Okay, Franklin, can you? Listen? Well, I'll I'll, uh, I'll agree that uh, that John can probably shoot better than me because he has a lot more practice at it than I do. But I'll put my vegetable growing skills up there. Cause right. We ha- we always had a garden when I was a kid. Thanks, Red. <laughs> oh, I tell you, I love this show. Uh, Eric Coder's proposed changes in the sentencing uh you know eric holder what do you think first of all what do you think about eric holder franklin i'm going to ask you that question direct uh, i don't have any particular problem with eric holder do you think he's doing a good job bad job terrible job i think 99 percent of what an attorney general does is uh doesn't change particularly from administration to administration you get a small area where different groups with different philosophies interpret the law differently, and that's where you get this kind of conflict and change. Uh, that article that you're talking about, the headline is not actually accurate. Uh, he's not changing sentences. He's changing prosecutorial decisions in terms of which statutes they use to prosecute in particular words, offenses. No, because there's unilaterally no, changing the you, law. No, unilaterally the input of no, Congress. That's not and true. That's not true at all. Jail. That's not true at all. Okay. There are multiple options available to prosecutors in terms of which statute they decide to charge somebody under. Because frequently the same conduct can be violative of more than one law. That decision makes a huge dis- difference in terms of the sentences that are available. And what he's talking about is our prisons are awash with people who have been convicted of various drug offenses. Now, under some the, of those people... Under the law. And some of those people are serious, big-time drug involved, have bi- big involvement. But a lot of those people are a lot lower in that process, and those very long mandatory minimum sentences are really part of what's, you know, you like to worry about the cost, John. It's an enormous Well, cost. if we put them in a barracks like, like we put our military, good enough for our Marines ought to be good enough for a nonviolent offender. Well, you'll have we should to take buy, that up with the should, Supreme Court then, John. Well, that's a bunch of you liberals that said we have to give them ice cream machines and HBO cable. Well, I'm not familiar <laughs> with that prison, actually. But. Well, th- this is the most incompetent, attorney general we've ever had and probably one of the most dishonest attorney generals we've ever had i agree uh j christian adams was an attorney in holder's justice department he finally quit wrote a book uh about how basically now this is what he's saying he's saying that they believe that the power is given out based on political donations ideology opposition to coal you name it they're using the justice department to punish their enemies and reward their friends oh by the way since he wrote the book new york times bestseller since he wrote the book he's now being uh, audited by the irs what's, what's the name it, of this book the name of the book sorry injustice injustice Let's take a call. Go ahead, caller. Franklin. Franklin. Yeah, you. turn your radio down, though. You got some uh, feedback going on there. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment there. Uh, we've got a. I was going to come and see you, and I, I need a, a real good dentist. <laughs> come and, well, I hear John's a good dentist. Well, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I was going to come and get you to give me a, a brief me on a malpractice uh, lawsuit because uh, before I go and see John and he breaks my jaw for being a Democrat. <laughs> well, I, I'm co- I'm confident that uh, that that John uh, delivers his dental services on a truly bipartisan fashion. <laughs> I'm certain of it. I just want to pass the comment along to you, Franklin. You hadn't got a chance in that room right there with them two that's in there with you. Hey, I'm being uh, unbiased this morning. (laughs) 
snowball, you ain't never been unbiased. That's just like that's just like Red said. You live, died. If somebody wants to cut, somebody wants to cut your wrist. Uh, the Republican, the big word Republican, would run out of your veins. Doughball or me? <laughs> Yeah, me, I'll, I'll agree with you. Steve, I don't know. It might be more libertarian with him. <laughs> See, I sit right in the middle. <laughs> yeah, bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you think Mr. Holder's doing a good job then, Franklin? You know, there's no conflicts or any problems with anything he's doing? I would never say that anybody's above criticism. What I'm saying to you is that the, the way the criticism – gets expressed oh he's the worst attorney general in history so forth that really ignores 99.9 percent of of everything that the attorney general does you mean like fast and furious or you know things like that where they yeah. invoked in ze- executive privilege yeah. and, instead of actually sending the documents absolutely. over absolutely so here was his defense on almost everything he's done he either is completely uninformed which to be honest is incompetent or he's dishonest those are your only two choices. No, I didn't know about options. Fast and Furious. I wasn't told Those about Fast and options. Furious. Uh, I, you know, it came. Oh, sure, it came up to my under under deputy right under me, but he never told me. Well, fine. Why didn't you fire him then? If he didn't tell you about illegally sending thousands of guns into the hands of Mexican drug lords, which then have been used to kill now three U.S. citizens, but hundreds except, of Mexicans. Except that what John doesn't like to talk about is that operation it did began not. under the You're previous You're absolutely wrong. That is a lie is and a mis... True. It is. It, it is was not. a different... Here, let me explain this to you, Franklin. Completely different operation. The Bush operation had already ended before Obama took office, and the Bush operation, guess Guess what, folks? They actually tracked the guns. They put the gun out there, kept up with the gun, tracked the gun. The Obama and and the Holder administration simply dumped the guns out there, didn't track them. Matter of fact, there's actually email that indicate they were looking forward to showing back up at crime scenes because then they could turn around and say, oh, look, we've got to control guns. The gun walking program began under the separate Bush administration. program already ended already concluded separate it was program a tactic of the arizona field office of the atf and it, it began had in already 2006. ended and it had already ended franklin that operation was closed down this was a brand new operation with new guidelines which meant they didn't track the guns you are the not you know that you are muddying the water just to I cover for him i am not franklin it what was i'm separate, saying is if you would be consistent and level your criticism across the board, it would be much more palatable for us to listen to. Instead, you just ignore the parts that are uncomfortable because they don't reflect the narrative you've established in your mind. Listen real close. Nobody said that putting a gun out there and trying to track it was a bad idea. What we said was... I didn't say it was a bad idea. Well, I didn't say that. Bush did it and tracked the gun. So they were able to say, this gun went to that guy, let's go get him. Holder simply dumped the guns out there, didn't track them at all, and and he dumped tons more guns than the Bush operation did. What Franklin is basically saying is, because we declared war on Britain in 1700s, then it's okay to have a war whenever because it's all part of the same operation. All right, changing the subject. This Australian baseball player that was uh, going to college, uh, visiting his girlfriend, goes out jogging, shot and killed by three young black men, 15, 16, 17 years old. Just felt like killing somebody. Why? Where's Al Sharpton in that group now? Where where, where, where are all these people that uh, are going to stand up for what's right and what's wrong? in the black communities well it's it, you know the, the the killings and outrage well, what's period. an outrage but, period. But his point is the hypocrisy it's like the the three boys that almost beat that white boy to death yeah, on the bus in the bus no comment from any of the civil rights leaders why aren't the civil rights r- leaders coming out and preaching their sermons i suppose both i suppose i suppose the question would be and, and I can't speak for them, but I suppose the question would be that there's not an indication that that 
the individual who was killed was targeted because of the race. There's absolutely no the indication in the Zimmerman case that there was race was an issue. No, he had actually he what had mentored the, black boys. He had testified for a homeless black man against the police. He had also made 47 well, calls to the police what about, about black people. What about the three boys on the bus that beat the crap out of the white boy because he didn't want to buy drugs from them? Where were they then? What about the boys that shot I, the I, I, infant sure. in his crib yeah. in front of his mother? Shot him in the face. Shot not, a baby in the face. I'm not sure what you're asking me. I, I, it's We're deplorable. It's a horrible crime. But they don't speak Punish out on to that. The operation they the don't law. speak out on that. Of course, when you've got a, once again, an attorney general who says that armed thugs standing in front of a polling place of the Black Panther Party was okay, that tells you all you need to know. All right. You're getting to where I wanted to go, John. I wanted to try to end the show. We haven't got but a few minutes, but I wanted to talk about the Brotherhood just a minute. The Muslim Brotherhood? Yes. And the Million mar million Muslim March on Washington yeah. on 9-11? Well, you know, <clears throat> right now we've got, we're have got we in a situation in Egypt that is got our backs to the wall, basically. Who should we side with? It's a good question. It's a fair question. Who should we side with? And I'm not sure we know the answer to that question. Well, let me just ask you this, Franklin. Just a real short, straight, simple answer. Do you think that we should side with the Brotherhood? I don't think it's a question of siding with the Brotherhood. The question is whether we side with the democratic process or not. That's the issue. Actually, I mean, they were elected, right? Steve, I mean, we agree with that. None of this is the process. The problem is, under this president's lack of leadership, we are a non-factor. The only unifying factor in Egypt right now is they all hate us. Let, let, the general hates us. The Coptic Christians hate us because we abandoned here, them. Here, the Muslim here, Brotherhood the, hates the, us. Here's the background and guess on what this Putin's that they're not going to talk Putin's about. Putin's getting ready to move in after 40 years of being pushed out of Egypt. Russia is now seeing an here's, opening. Here's the background that John's not going to want to talk about. This is how we got into this situation. Okay. When the Camp David Accords were done, the, the peace treaty between Israel and Egypt back in the 70s, part of what we did was make a commitment to a huge piece of military aid to the Egyptian army every year since then. Mm -hmm. And that's how we bought our influence with the Egyptians over the years. Do that. That started all the way back in like 1978, and we've done that consistently. What's happened over the last five to six years is that other nations in the Middle East have begun to provide that aid also in bigger quantities than we're even providing it. So you've got Qatar and the Saudis and these other folks who are providing this money because they don't want the Muslim Brotherhood to arise. And so they actually have more influence than we do now because we haven't been upping that aid. Now, I'm not saying we ought to do that, but that's the dynamic of what's happening on the ground. There. I thought Obama was going to be able to talk his way out of it. Well, we'll see. There was a story in the paper today, <laughs> though, that the Israelis and the, and the uh, Palestinian negotiators were making some significant progress well, right now in the peace talks. The, the problem here is is that America basically in the across the world now is viewed as harmless as an enemy and treacherous as a friend. And this is the result. This president has been weak and that weakness I is read, now created a I vacuum. I rather doubt that, that the folks in, in, in Afghanistan or you mean uh, where Pakistan he's getting ready to unilaterally that. pull out like he did in Iraq? And you think we should we keep our stayed. army there? We for should have the stayed in Iraq just like we stayed in Korea, just like we stayed in Japan. We should have stayed with some presence. We should have probably kept a small presence of special forces troops there that could have kept Iraq Guess under control. What? Iraq is Guess imploding. What? So all Guess of the what? men that sacrificed Guess their what? lives have now we been have lost for of special nothing. Forces in Iraq. Let's have the Brotherhood. Let's talk about the Brotherhood a little bit next week. Well, they've met in the White House, and the uh, Israelis have not. Uh, Hillary Clinton, I, uh, the Obama campaign, they, they've got to. Uh, <laughs> uh, from what I understand, there are several people with the Brotherhood uh, that's been involved in the Obama cabinet. They are. Uh -huh. Let's talk about that a little bit next week. Uh, anyway, John, if you'll bring us the list of uh, the, uh, the brothers. Uh, for, that's been part of the cabinet next week. We'll talk about that. A the little brotherhood. Bit. Yeah, the brotherhood. All right.
All right, folks, uh, that's it for this week, and uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Backfire with Steve Hickson, John Stan.